Today, I'm making a pilgrimage to the tail of the dragon, and I brought a muscle car. If you know about the tail of the dragon, that'll probably surprise you. That's because this is a tight, curvy, forested road famous primarily with motorcycle enthusiasts, not people with huge American muscle cars. Oh, and it's also in the middle of nowhere. And while this Camaro may be the V8-powered SS model, it's still no sport bike, as I quickly found out. This thing was not really meant to be doing this kind of driving. Your main goal when you're at Tail of the Dragon on a Camaro is not having fun or driving fast, but rather keeping it between the lines. It's like an autocross in the forest. I have literally no idea where that corner of the car is. This thing is a pig on this road. I'm starting to feel sick. But I'm driving. Which would you which would you least rather be driving? This Camaro or that touring bike? Ah! Jesus! When does this end? Eventually it did end. That was not the best experience of my life. Fortunately, Tale of the Dragon isn't the only road up here. Next stop, the wider, faster Chahaw Skyway. This car is so much better on these long, sweeping curves than it was on these tight turns before. It's like night and day. It drives so well. I can't believe I'm in a Camaro. Camaros of years past would have been begging me to stop right now. No offense to third gen F body drivers. Not that you have email. Wow. This is excellent. So it turns out the Camaro is better on roads with long sweeping curves than it is on roads with really tight turns. Now you might be saying, duh, that's obvious, but it surprises me. I thought the Camaro would try to kill me on roads with any curves, so I'm impressed. What else do I think of it? Well, I don't like the fact that this car has more blind spots than a panel van, and the tiny narrow mirrors don't really help matters. I love the heads-up display, which comes in full color and shows, among other things, the Chevy logo, your speed, and your audio selection. I don't like the fact that the interior uses some of the cheapest materials that currently exist in the known earth. I love the infotainment system, which is incredibly intuitive and easy to operate. I love the big 6.2 liter V8, which makes a muscular 426 horsepower. But I'm not the biggest fan of the trunk opening, which could be generously described as microscopic. Another problem is the car is just not loud enough. I'm sitting here, windows up, in park, and... This is a muscle car. I want to hear it. I want it to growl at me. I do, however, love the Camaro's retro styling. So the ultimate question is, would I buy it? And the answer is, probably not. That's because this car costs $40,000, and to me, there are just too many other ways to spend your money at that price point. But the thing is, if you're interested in the Camaro, you don't care what people like me have to say. You don't read the reviews and consumer reports and say, does this car have enough safety features to meet the needs of my family? You don't care. You look at the Camaro and you say, that thing is cool. I want one. And then you go pick one up. In which case, I wish you the best because I think it is a pretty good car, if not a great one. Also, may I recommend a vanity plate? <laughs>